Welcome to the last week of March. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik on News Channel 3's exclusive environmental blog, Your Environment. And this week, a special look at what's coming up this next weekend. Around Saturday and about 8.30 local time, it's a special event called Earth Hour, not Earth Day. That's something else, a different event going on there. Earth Hour is your opportunity to learn a little bit more about energy conservation and more importantly, how you can save money by conserving energy. And that is spreading all over the world. We'll take a look at more about what's going on around the world and how you can get involved in both the event and throughout the rest of the year and more about what we're doing here at News Channel 3 next week. So if you'd like to know more about that, stick around for more details on that. We'll also have a look at how much rainforest space we have saved in the last week since we were here with you last, and also a look ahead at some more events coming your direction, courtesy of some Mid-South conservation groups. So stay tuned for more on that. Questions, concerns, ideas, events you would like to get publicized uh, here in the Mid-South or beyond, drop them to me at this email address at the bottom of your screen at austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to have your information out there so we can tell everybody else about it as to what's going on into the Mid-South and elsewhere. Good opportunity to learn about the climate and how it's changing by humans using more and more fossil fuels to power the planet in six days on Saturday, March 30th. It's going to be Earth Hour. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Here in the Mid-South area, again, things are decently quiet. Don't forget about our website, again, at wreg.com slash weather slash environment, or just go to weather and click on the Your Environment tab at the top of the screen. Now, again, about five days left. I said six, but again, about five days, plus again, a little bit more than that. Again, more about that at earthhour.org. And again, more coming up about the rainforest site and just how clicking on a big green button can do to a lot to help to conserve uh, natural resources and protect the lungs of our planet as well. Pollen has been a pretty big idea in the last couple of days as the growing season really sets in as we go from winter into spring, which we did this last week. And as of right now, looking at some pretty high amounts of pollen for today and also from yesterday, mostly elm and juniper and alder out there. The next several days is looking again at a decent amount of pollen out there, especially as the sun comes out, lets things dry out by just a little bit. So we will be seeing better chances of some pollen and some sneezing out there. So for those of you with allergies, could be looking at some problems out there. Uh, air pollution, a little bit more in the Mid-South area over the last couple of days, especially again for the metro area, which again at this time of the year and in this area of the country, we can pick up a little bit more than that. And that's exactly what we've been seeing out there. Uh, conditions out there in the yellow shaded category, that's a moderate level of air pollution. And again, should be seeing a better green quality into tomorrow for Memphis and the Mid-South. We'll be keeping our eyes on that. So stay tuned to News Channel 3 for more on what's going on with air quality out there. Mississippi River continues to be in flood stage and all that water from the Missouri River is heading downstream from both the Mississippi, the Missouri, and the Ohio River Valleys. All that water has got to go someplace, so we'll be looking at all that rain and water draining across much of the midsection of the country, making its way past Memphis in about the next several days. Now, the river will be dropping in level at Memphis, but it's going to take better part of the next several days. Matter of fact, it won't be below flood stage until early April at this rate and even into the first week of April will take a while to get all that taken care of. Wolf River Harbor was cleaned up again by the Wolf River Conservancy. Great group to go to to find out more information about what they're doing to promote conservation, water quality, and also to make certain that trash is picked up out there. So thanks a lot to Wolf River Harbor in partnership with Living Lands and Waters. If you've never seen about their uh, activities out there to help kids, especially high school kids, learn more about how important it is to make certain that the environment is cleaned up. Great opportunity, again, to learn more a little bit about what's going on out there and to get kids involved out there. They also have tree plantings going on, bonfires, a little bit of some uh, outdoor parties to, again, get to know the members out there. Also uh, taking a look at public policy, a good opportunity to learn more about what goes on in your water systems, pollution, 
and what local city, state, and national level leaders are doing to help keep things clean. Next April 13th, a Saturday service project on the Wolf River Greenway Trail, North Mud Island, and of course the bonfires and a lot of other stuff going on, including the river paddle out there. You can find more details about things with Wolf River at wolfriver.org for more details on that. All right, Earth Hour, it is coming this next Saturday. It's a great opportunity to learn more about how much energy we use and more importantly, how we can conserve that energy, cutting back on all the light switches we leave on, all the appliances we leave plugged in, just turning those off and curtailing our use of all that stuff can help us in the long run. And there's going to be a lot of stuff going on around the planet coming up this next Saturday. If you'd like to go to earthhour.org, you can find out more information about where the Earth events will be taking place near you. Unfortunately, as you take a look at this particular map, you don't see a lot going on in and around the Mid-South area. We have asked local leaders of various cities, towns, and communities that if they have anything going on, to where they will be participating to let us know about that so we can tell them. But unfortunately, things have been very quiet. And the closest events to us are in Louisville, back into South Carolina, down toward New Orleans, and also again in various other states. But unfortunately, here in the Mid-South area, there's really little, if anything, that is scheduled to go on. We will be participating here at News Channel 3, and there are tons of stories around not only America, but throughout the rest of the world about how individuals are teaming up to get the word out about conservation and convincing local authorities about how they can participate and reduce the amount of fossil fuels that are used out there, trash cleanup, and again, reducing light pollution. Tons of stories available at earthhour.org, so a good opportunity to find out more about what you may see out there. And you can read the past reports from what has happened around the world when it comes to advocacy and keeping people informed as to what's going on. This has been going on for the last few years. And at News Channel 3, we're going to, again, uh, contribute in our own way by helping, uh, by turning off lights that are not needed here in the News Channel 3 building. Now, keep in mind something like this. If you leave the lights on at one place or another, even if it costs a penny or a nickel per hour to run something per month, you're leaving the lights on at your business for 168 hours. If you go from midnight to midnight, you will be, again, paying for an awful lot of energy. But if you install timers or make certain that the lights are only on from, say, 6 a.m., to 6 p.m. Again, we're not talking about keeping the employees in the dark. We're not talking about making certain that it's unsafe for anybody. But if lights are not needed in a conference room or a bathroom, it's a good possibility you could save a lot of energy and money by turning stuff like this off. What would it take to do something like this? We'll take a look at this grid right here, and you can see a little bit more about the cost per hour per day about keeping an incandescent light bulb on for a certain amount of time. Now, again, we've marked off here for just around two hours about a 60 watt bulb and again this is old-fashioned incandescent light not the compact fluorescent which costs less if we take that up to say eight hours per day then that's going to cost you $17.52 a year at regular power prices but keep in mind that if you keep that light on for 24 hours a day you're talking about paying 50 bucks a year per light in whatever room you are looking at. So we are looking at a lot of money being spent at just keeping a light on for a very long period of time when it's not needed and it's not needed by anybody specifically. So again, that is something to really consider about your pocketbook as a very good reason for keeping things a little bit less usable when it comes to lights out there or other appliances as well. Click on the big green button at your environment at the, the rainforestsite.com and you'll be able to save rainforest space. So far, 4.3 million clicks have saved 95 million square feet. 
or 2,190 acres of rainforest space. Those, again, are the lungs of our planet. We need to keep those as safe as possible out there. So, again, go to the rainforestsite.com and find out more. More information, again, at wreg.com slash weather slash environment. And, of course, we'll be participating in Earth Hour coming up next Saturday. So a special edition of Your Environment will be coming your way next Sunday as we wrap up how much we, many lights we turned off and how much we would save if we kept those off throughout the rest of the year. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from downtown Memphis. This has been the News Channel 3 video environment blog, Your Environment. Thanks for joining us.